Hello everybody. Uh, today I'll try to discuss uh, the welding procedure for the polymeric material or in general you can say the plastic component. So basically plastic welding is the joining of the two thermoplastic components because the methodology for the processing of the plastics, uh, thermoplastics and thermosets plastic are different. So here I'll try to focus mainly on the processes or technologies of welding or uh, mainly thermoplastics. Now in this case we basically uh, in, in principle when the thermoplastics are heated and then with the application of the pressure and therefore it results in the cross linking of the polymer chains or polymer molecules and then it creates or setting between these two structures. So this is the basic principle associated with this thing we mean to say that forming of the cross link structure and that uh, able to represent the joining or welding of the two components. So in this case two work pieces are fused together or with or without uh, filler material. So in this cases may, may or may not be required any kind of the filler material when you try to join the plastic component. But joints forms the parts are cooled below the glass transition temperature. So we have seen that uh, in polymeric material we do there is no one fixed defined the melting temperature rather than it becomes softened at glass transition temperature. So if you want to join so cooling should allow such that temperature should be below the glass transition temperature or in, in cases uh, some um, crystalline polymer in that cases probably we have to consider the melting temperature should be below the melting temperature but for amorphous polymer structure it should be the glass transition temperature is the main important temperature and we can take this as a reference so, so such that cooling should be below that that temperature. Now welding of the thermoplastic is accomplished three sequential stages one is the surface preparation that is the one part then application of the heat and pressure and then we can follow the uh, cooling procedure associated with the uh, polymer welding process. Now if you see the welding techniques for uh, polymeric materials so here we see that there is a the first figure you see there is a first we keep in contact with the two, two components and uh, so the, it is having oil distinguish the interface. Now if it is possible to somehow uh, remelt uh, melt the interface or we can eliminate the interface then these poly mo molecules are come in contact and gradually it becomes uh, this thing uh, the joint when it uh, acts as a single component. So here interfaces will confirm each other by intermolecular diffusion and chain this is the mechanism is the intermolecular diffusion should happen and chain entanglement will occur uh, then only we can say that uh, the joining will occurs between the two plastic component. So healing of the interface we see that no healing first step the act equal to 0 just in contact having the distinguished interface then partial healing. So partial healing means the healing is the interface basically diffusion of the polymer chain should occurs. So to activate the diffusion we need to apply some kind of the heat to the, the at least at the at the surface the interface. Now once it is the along with the application of the uh, the heating maybe pressure is also required to improve the male flow across the interface and we can say here it is a, a partial healing and after long time then uh, this complete healing will occur so that means the joining between the uh, two polymer component is possible with the application of the heat and pressure at the interface. So now degree of welding when how efficiently or effectively the polymer uh, can two polymers can be joined it depends on the the material properties it depends on the the processing temperature and of course interfacial pressure and of course time because we are talking about the diffusion to occurs here it means that the for diffusion the time is the matter here in this cases apart from the material properties and the temperature now of course uh, the temperature means which temperature is should raise because we can make the categorization of the polymeric material in the two different way one is the amorphous polymers so not having very regular structure this thing or uh, and semi crystalline polymer so semi crystalline polymer is follow certain regular structure uh, of the polymeric component so it, it is amorphous polymer so it in this case is the the glass transition temperature so heat should be heating should be done as such that the temperature can be above the glass transition temperature and it can go up to the melting point temperature but if it is semi crystalline polymers if we are handling it should be always above the melting point temperature. So in these two cases the melting point temperature is more important for semi crystalline polymer but glass transition temperature is more important in case of the amorphous polymer 
but of course this we are talking about the the mechanism in case of the thermoplastic polymer but if it is thermosets thermosets cannot be usually not difficult to weld or cannot be weld without the addition of the any kind of the tie layer between the such as thermoplastic layers between the two thermoset component so that is the usual procedure for joining or welding of the this uh, thermosets polymer so basically here we will try to focus on the the welding procedure for the thermoplastic polymer there are different processes so in this processes all are is basically what we apply the raise the temperature and another cases what we can apply the pressure based on that there are the, all the different kind of the the uh, welding processes has been or welding technologies has been developed so one is the hot gas welding process so in this cases application of the gas is their hot gas hot plate welding process so the metal is in contact with the hot plate ultrasonic welding some kind of the vibratory energy is basically transmitted at the interface spin welding rotation such that frictional heat will be generated similarly vibration welding also there so here also some frictional heat will be generated then friction stair welding both the frictional heat as well as the steering action are active in this case to join the two components and of course some particular radio frequency welding some particular frequency application of this thing the the because of this radio frequency heat will be generated at the interface and this uh, the two components can be joined so these are the basic technologies uh, associated with the joining of the thermoplastics polymer now we'll discuss one by one one is the hot gas welding process so hot gas welding process is the very manual plastic welding process for joining of the thermoplastic material it's a manually we can develop this process so we use the hot gas torch is used to or or we can use the is used to direct hot air or, or to both the joint surfaces so that means either we can use hot gas torch or you can use the direct hot air or combining both uh, to join the two component surfaces so oil rod so here and the heating and materials to their uh, softening temperature so heating to their softening temperature at least that means maybe above the glass transition temperature or above the melting point temperature for the polymeric material now once is the heated uh, using this torch one particular position is heated then we apply the some kind of the pressure so if the heating is this part and with the application of the pressure together they, they, the two materials can be bonded using the hot gas oiling process this technique is actually not automa uh, easily automatized uh, because it is a primary use for the repairs or individual manufacturing or very small to complex structure we can use this particular process. So some in maybe some repair work in very localized position we need it so manually we can perform this hot gas welding process. So it is mainly used for the repairing of the uh, polymeric component. Then hot plate welding process. So here the application of the heat is different way uh, in this case basically uh, we use some kind of the heated plate here hot plate heated plate and that heated plate which is come in contact of the two specimen here and with the along with that there is application of the pressure towards the heated plate so hot plate will try to melt or make the try to make is the soft uh, bring the softness to the contacted uh, specimen so once it is done and then we remove the hot plate from the at the interface and then two polymeric components are so here the second step in the hot plate is removed after heating these two interface of the of the specimen then uh, then two are pressurized and that such that the heated part will come in contact and it creates one in distinguished oil interface and two materials can be joined polymeric materials can be joined together so some parameters here is that hot plate relatively long cycle time so then it takes a much more time it's not very quick because we have to sufficiently heating of the substance is required by with the application of the hot plate the basic plate has to be heated first and then hot plus transmit the heat to the component but it can take from the 10 seconds to minutes also for complete of this process and compared to the vibration and ultrasonic welding process so that means as compared to the vibration and ultrasonic welding process this plate is little slower uh, in, in that respect so however the process is very simple the design is very simple in these cases and at the same time it can produce a very strong joint so that's why almost all thermoplastics can be utilized uh, in following this particular process so when there is a mass production and large structure a large diameter plastic pipe is required then we can follow this hot plate uh, uh, welding process we can use the ultrasonic welding also for joining of the plastic component so ultrasonic plastic welding is the joining of the 
of the reforming of the thermoplastics through the use of the heat generated from the high frequency mechanical motion. So, if you see we create the high vibratory energy at the interface. So, horn this can be utilized just creating the vibration here the horn and this will be transmitted through the workpiece at the interface between the two workpiece. This is the, the interface. So, this interface, so interfacial slip will occur, shearing action will occur at the same time uh, friction will occur at the interface and then with the friction heat generation will be associated with the frictional uh, heat uh, because of the friction then to with the application of the pressure also or is a moderate pressure between the two seat these two can be joined together. So, here high frequency electrical energy is converted to the high frequency mechanical motion. So, we supply the electrical energy and then we create the mechanical motion of the horn and then it is transmitted to the interface. So, mechanical motion along with the applied force. So, of course, some force should be applied uh, so that interface can come in contact uh, and intimate contact and then these two interfaces can be joined by with the application of the localized heating at the uh, because creation of the by high vibratory energy. So, frictional heat is at the plastic components and melting surface is joint area. So, plastic materials can melt, but this melting occurs exactly at the very localized position. So, bulk melting might not be there, but very localized melting will be there at that phase and then two components can be molecular bond can be uh, formed between the two components using the ultrasonic welding process. Similarly, spin welding process we can see the process of spin welding generating heat by rotational friction. So, here also thermoplastic most of the thermoplastic polymer components can be applied for the spin welding process. So, you see that uh, the high rotational speed may be usually we keep it one, one part as a fixed and the other part other half can be rotated at the very high speed. So, at the interface some frictional heat will be generated. Once sufficient amount of the heat is generated then we make it press it axially such that the that these two components can be joined or uh, bonding occurs between the plus uh, polymeric uh, component and then allow to allow to cool and solidify to form a particular uh, welded joint. So, in this case we see that spin welding is basically used for manufacturing aerosol bottles, uh, floats and other circular parts usually made um, by the uh, spin welding process. Now, we can look into the vibration welding process. So, vibration welding also although similar, but in this case uh, uh, some kind of the uh, vibration linear vibration is usually created at the contact surface. So, if you look into this focus suppose this is the workpiece component and the vibration can be created. So, at the interface some uh, vibration will be there and the, at the same time it will create some kind of frictional heat generation at the interface and the two components can be joined together with application of the uh, pressure. So, here see that the spin welding this we see the we follow the rotational motion of the, of the one of the component, but in case of vibration one we follow the, the linear motion of the uh, uh, component. So, here this is the, the difference for the generation of the heat although both the cases we can we can expect the, the frictional heat generation is there. So, here by the frictional heat uh, this thing the polymer uh, are melt or um, can be softened between these two components where the parts are joined. And after that, some pressure can be controlled by the machine forces such that uh, should not be the melted part should not be uh, away from the joint component. So, some accordingly we can control the pressure also uh, and that such, such that it is uh, the molten joint can be confined in the welding area. So, here giving a provide can very smooth hermetically sealed oil can be produced using the vibration welding process. So, if you look into the vibration uh, Pro, uh, progress is the oil takes in the four distinct phases. So, one is that solid friction phase, uh, transient phase, steady state uh, melt flow phase and cooling phase. These are the four steps associated with this uh, process. So, first is the uh, solid state friction phase that means start at the initiating before melting this thing some, some relative motion between these two components are there because of the application of the vibration and of course, the certain magnitude also magnitude should not be very high. And then second the solid uh, second will be the transient phase. So, keep on uh, starting the melting process and gradually temperature is increasing. So, that is why it is the transient state. So, once it is done at a certain time then it is the steady state and then melt flow occurs uh, between the two components. So, once it is done melt flow occurs then we can stop uh, application of the, the vibratory energy 
and then we allow to cool and further allow to the solidification of the components such that a bonding between the two components can be joined here and it can be formed in this case. Now there is another uh, oiling process that is called the radio frequency oiling process. So which is also referred as the high frequency oiling or the dielectric uh, oiling process. So basically this applicability of this radio frequency oiling depending upon the dielectric properties of this particular material. So before that we try to understand what is the how the this uh, radio frequency heating can be done using the, the electric power. So we start with the electric power. So then electric power is basically creating the radio frequency power that means such that it emits uh, radio frequency power means. So uh, here we can see there is a one part is connected to the alternating electrode 1 another is the uh, electrode 2. So, so the since there is a alternating current electrode 1 and electrode 2 and having some kind of the phase differences are there with the application of the current and uh, therefore some oscillating electromagnetic field will be created. So, electric uh, sorry oscillating electric, uh, electric field will be created. So, in this case rapidly alternating electric field is set up between the two welding bars. So, the rapidly changing the electric field between these two electrode is basically created fast. So, that will create some kind of the oscillating electrode field between these two electrode. Now, with this uh, there is a uh, kind of the some with the application of the rapidly changing the alternate electric field will create some kind of the heat generation of the uh, to the dielectric uh, component. So, therefore, this method of joining thin sheets of the polar thermoplastic material together. So, polar thermoplastic means is to some extent that it is connected to the dielectric properties is available for this particular material. So, in this process we use the very high frequency. So, 13 to 100 megahertz frequency can be used uh, such that in this cases the electromagnetic energy is responsible uh, to fuse the metals together. So, therefore, electromagnetic energy of course it depends on the what is the frequency is uses in the uh, in this particular uh, process. Now, what the interface? So, if you see the diagram the lower die is there and upper die is there. So, between these two, two seats are there. So, two seats of the dielectric material is there. So, once in the in this cases when we are applying the uh, radio frequency power. So, of course, radio frequency power we can tuning and user control we can create the, the this particular frequency radio frequency in this particular process and here the main mechanism for the rapidly alternating uh, electric field has been generated and this electromagnetic energy is basically this used to fuse the together at the interface and of course, this upper die is the here you put the, the at the interface uh, within the dielectric material that the rapidly al alternating electric field will be generating some kind of the heat at the interface. So, when heat is generated and the, with the application of the pressure from the upper die and then two comp plastic components sheet can be joined together using the radio frequency welding process. Here we can give the more details about the process. So, radio frequency welding which is also known as the dielectric welding also known as the high frequency welding process which is mainly applicable in case of the plastic welding process. So, that actually use the high frequency electric field we have already seen that 13 to 100 megahertz frequency is required in this particular process. So, we can say this is the utilize the high frequency electric field and that high frequency electric field actually induces the heat within the structure. So, heat and the thermoplastic. So, of course, it will be able to heat and melting the thermoplastic. So, thermoplastic should have properties of the the dielectric properties should be maintained by the thermoplastic then only this alternative uh, high frequency electric field will be able to generate the heat at the uh, interface or the thermoplastic polymer. So, here electric field is applied pair of the electrode we have already seen that we use the two electrode this is one electrode this is another electrode. So, with the pair of the electrode the electric field is actually generated or uh, this thing. Now, after the parts being joined together then with the with the are clamped together. So, in this cases we can see this clamping force is applied by one of the electrode. So, this clamping force is maintained until the joint, joint solidification. So, once sufficient heat is there by the the, the high frequency electric field we generate the heat uh, at the interface then we apply the, the clamping force with one of the electrode and then this allow to solidify until the solid by the clamping force is holding on to join the two seats together. So, only plastic which have dipoles can be heated using the radio wave. So, that means only the dipoles they are able to dipole means it is having the good dielectric properties 
See, therefore, not all plastic are able, able to join using this particular uh, process, using this particular process, which is having sensitive to cure the dipoles can be generated with the in the uh, in the radio waves that kind of the polymeric metal is able to join using the radio frequency welding process. So, this process is actual actual not well suited for the thick plate basically this process is very 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 much applicable in case of the um, overly uh, complex joint. So, that overly complex joint can be produced but it is not exactly not well suited for the thick or overlay complex joints. The most common use of this in the lab joint configuration or seals of the very thin plastic components is required. In that cases, we can utilize the radio frequency uh, welding process. Now, we will try to discuss on the another process that is called the ultrasound pulse uh, laser welding system. So, we know the ultrasound pulse laser welding system is the, uh, this laser that emits the ultrasound pulses of light. Generally, the pulse duration of the order of femtosecond to picosecond in that range. So, in that cases we say this is the ultrasound pulse laser. Now, ultrasound pulse laser can create the nonlinear absorption of the, of the energy, thermal energy. So, laser pulse only deposited on the focal zone which leads to the localized melting of the uh, component because in, the, the, in this cases the pulse duration is very, very small. So, it is creating the heating or melting the substrate at the very localized position which part this laser energy is basically focused. So, extremely high power in the ultrasound pulses can be achieved high power ultrasound that means its peak power is very very high pulse duration although pulse duration is very small but peak power is very high. So, it means that for a very small time gap on the order of femtosecond to the picosecond level very high amount of the energy laser energy is basically applied to the substrate. So, this is achieved can be YBYAG laser uh, in using this particular laser. So, now you can see that it is uh, since the energy transfer to the system is very extremely small. So, therefore, heat affected zone is actually very small using the in presence of the ultrasound pulse laser. You see the the first is that uh, it, it is the opaque material. So, he, here opaque material you can see that it is heating. So, it can reach up to this particular point. If it is transparent material, then heat will occur at the interface and uh, because in opaque material, so when it is interacting with the substrate, the heating, heating on the upper part of the plate, but if it is transparent material there. So, this particular wavelength of the laser light will transfer into this particular material. So, it will go and then it will reach to the at the interface. So, second layer here, the second layer is basically uh, opaque material. So, therefore, further uh, transmission of the laser light will not occur. So, therefore, at the interface the laser light will be released in this particular case. Now, if you see both are transparent material, what will happen? The both are transparent material, then laser light is transparent in both the cases. So, it is so at the interface we keep it such such material that will, will be able to absorb the laser light such that very thin layer you can put at the interface. So, laser light can be absorbed and the two materials can be joined uh, together. Now, this is the case three different cases we can consider uh, this to understand the laser absorption of the different types of the material opaque material, transparent material and the molten material. Molten material is this one. So, this color indicates the molten material. So, here you see if both are transparent we do not use any kind of absorbing medium in, in between the two interface of the two seats. In this case laser light passes through that. So, without heating to the substrate material, but if there is a nonlinear absorption is there in that cases it will try to melt or uh, try to heat the substrate even it is the transparent to this particular wavelength because the absorption is the not linear the absorption is the non-linear and that non-linear absorption is usually associated with the ultrasound pulse laser. But in case of the normal laser, so medium or uh, long pulse laser in that cases, so we usually occur the linear absorption. but uh, in very specific cases uh, the, uh, when you are utilizing the ultrasound pulse laser in that cases we use can expect some kind of the nonlinear absorption of the laser light will occur at the interface. So, here of course, the molten zone can be uh, less as compared to the uh, whether opaque material or as compared to the, uh, the one transparent or one opaque material at the interface. I mean to say that be between the with reference to the A and B of this particular uh, process. Now, further on the ultrasound pulse laser welding process. So, it laser pulses extremely short pulse. So, it can be range usually in the 10 
femtosecond to 10 picosecond. So, 1 femtosecond is 10 to the power minus 15 second and 1 picosecond is 10 to the power minus 12 second. So, in that range the pulse duration is there. Now, very high peak power density is uh, possible in this ultra for ultra set pulse laser because it is obtained up to the some uh, terawatt uh, per centimeter square. So, here see uh, we can see that um, this uh, model of the laser emission the optical power it can be like this is the peak power this indicates the peak power and this is the pulse on time and pulse off time. So, that indicates the one cycle time and it is the in this case is pulse on pulse on. So, remaining time is the pulse off time and we can see the average power when you are talking if you take the average power of this thing it can be very low. So, average power is continuous power throughout the duration of the application of the laser. So, in that sense, so here instead of one very low power laser continuous can be applied or the over a short duration high amount of the uh, of power can be applied to the, the substrate. So, these are the differences using the pulse or continuous laser. Now, ultra short pulse the femtosecond the pulse duration can be 10 femtosecond or uh, some picosecond. So, energy per pulse it can be around of the order of nanojoule to can be uh, millijoule in that range. So, pulse repetition rate can be from some kilohertz to it can go up to the 100 megahertz in this particular the frequency can be very high very low to very high and average power can be from 1 watt to 100 watt. So, average power is actually very low. but the peak power or power density I can say that power density is usually very high associated with the ultrasound pulse laser process. Now, in case of the uh, laser energy or, or femtosecond pulse uh, absorbed by the nonlinear process. So, absorption of the laser pass or the, or the laser light passes through the transparent metal is actually nonlinear process. So, that is why using this particular process we can use even for the very transparent material can be joined using the ultrasound pulse uh, laser system. So, here not only transparent material we in general we can say the we can join plastic, we can join the glass, we can join the metal plastic combination together using the ultrasound pulse laser. Here we can see the nonlinear absorption for ultrasound differs from the conventional absorption process leading to the non equilibrium state in the process. So, here you can see the this is a conventional laser process, conventional laser or I can say the low to medium uh, pulse laser system. In this case no absorption occurs on the transparent material, but same material you can use the ultrasound pulse laser since it can follow the nonlinear absorption process. So, therefore, we can expect some kind of the heating or melting at the interface uh, of this process or throughout uh, some heating can happen when laser passes through the material. So, here is the differences between these two. So, of course, this is equally closely equilibrium position, equilibrium process and is actually very non-equilibrium thermal process associated with the the ultrasound pulse laser system. Now, why linear absorption requires opaque material? Nonlinear absorption occurs even for the transparent material at the specific wavelength of the laser. It means that in which cases the laser may not be able to join using the uh, normal uh, pulse laser. In that cases, we can use the uh, ultrasound pulse laser because it is easily follow the nonlinear absorption of the laser light of the material to the material. So, ultrasound pulse laser welding advantages no thermal or shock wave damage usually occurs compared to the long pulse duration and the high peak power laser. So, we do not associate with thermal or the shock wave uh, kind of the defect associated with the ultrasound pulse laser. Heat effector zone is actually very very low because it is a very fast process. So, not having the sufficient time to heat depletion dissipation to occurs throughout the structure. So, that is why heat effector zone is very low as compared to the conventional long pulse laser. So, therefore, since heat effector zone is very small, so induced thermal stress of the material is also minimized. The workpiece follows the high rate of the heating and cooling process over a very narrow zone as compared to the long pulse laser that also you can see very high rate of heating and cooling over a narrow zone compared to the long pulse laser associated to the ultrasound pulse laser welding system. Now, based on this thing uh, the type of the material opaque transparent material this is one of the laser welding uh, system that is called the laser transmission welding. So, transmission welding also is known as the laser transmission welding, laser plastic welding or we can say the through transmission laser welding system and, and sometimes laser polymer welding. So, these are the different names uh, the of the laser transmission welding process. So, it is different way but how it works. So, transmitting laser we can see the this thing radiation through one piece of the plastic. So, here is the laser beam 
with the transparent material that is transparent to the infrared laser and then but other the in this cases uh, this transparent or opaque to the in infrared laser the second part can be utilized but of course here you can see at the interface the infrared absorber can be put and then in that cases it creates the oil zone between these two components of course some clamping force is also required so transmission welding aims to apply the energy between the two plastic pieces at the interface so basically Trans, uh, transmission welding process we aims to the uh, objective should be release the heat at the interface now you can see that things that transmission in the process you can for the laser transmission welding the one is that transmissive upper part so upper part should be transparent to the laser light so for example the upper layer needs to be transparent to the laser wavelength for example it can be 808 nanometer or 980 nanometer this kind of the length and in the in the infrared or near infrared spectrum so if wavelength is uh, 808 nanometer or usually 980 nanometer or i can say the infrared or the near infrared spectrum in that case is the upper part is transparent to the laser light then we can use the absorbing lower layer absorbing the lower needs to be the ability to absorb light energy to create the heat so lower layer is be sujan in such way that will be able to absorb the laser light such that at the interface the laser energy will be released and uh, some uh, heating or should occurs at the interface so in this case most commonly if both are transparent material so we can use the absorbing additive so carbon black can be utilized one of the one component uh, so uh, at the interface such that it acts as the absorb of the laser light in the laser transmission welding process now this is the upper part lower part and third part is the clamping and the contact so intimate contact uh, clamping is also required such that some pressure can be applied or uh, after the heating such that these two layers can be joined uh, together so usually we apply the constant force consistent contact clamping is actually required in this particular uh, process now process requirement of the laser transmission welding so material compatibility for example plastic to be require similar chemical compati compatibility so plastics to be joined require chemical chem similar chemical comp compatibility so two plastics have the similar melting or softening range both plastics will be melting at or near the same time so that is the one point this thing of course we can use some kind of the, the absorbing medium at the interface or directly we can use the ultrasound pulse laser such that in that cases we can the two plastic components can be joined together without using any kind of the additives in between so there are different types of the materials can be covered up for laser transmission welding for example nylon ps6 and variations uh, poly polypropylene pp polycarbonate so th these are the abs ps so pt fe pmm so these are the different type of the plastic component which can be applicable or which can be joined together using the laser transmission welding process but we have to be careful to look into in all the laser transmission welding process either you can use the laser light of the order of 808 nanometer these things or we can utilize the ultrasound pulse laser also to join the two components so when you try to use the normal laser the infrared or near infrared uh, laser we can if you utilize in that cases we have to uh, apply some kind of the absorbing medium between the two uh, two uh, transparent component but if you want to use the ultrasound pulse laser in that cases the two transparent material can be joined together in that case no need to use any kind of the absorbing media between the interface so that is the difference of the laser transparency rolling using the conventional pulse laser or using the ultrasound pulse laser process now we try to look into once it is discuss about the joining of the plastic uh, polymeric component now we we'll discuss the welding of the ceramic component so we know the ceramic components uh, are basically uh, inorganic non metallic material uh, which is actually usually forms from the oxides various uh, oxides of the various metals and various metals even nitrides carbides the silicon components also uh, uh, silicides can be used by proper forming and high temperature sintering the uh, this ceramics can be uh, prepared so physical properties of the ceramic is actually dif different from the metallic component uh, for example linear expansion coefficient of the ceramic is very very lower as compared to the metal and can range from 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 6 uh, per unit kelvin but melting point is really very high of the ceramic is much higher than metals and some ceramics have the high 
work at the high temperature for example the ceramics can be to the high temperature application it can be 2000 to 3000 degree centigrade and maintain the strength at the room temperature so therefore in this case if you try to process the metals at 2000 3000 degree centigrade most of the metals the lose their strength at this high temperature uh, lose the strength at this particular temperature so that's why ceramics can be utilized at the high temperature applications now other way ceramic materials are the poor machinability it's, uh, and the low plasticity is very low and in uh, impact toughness also very low at the same times weak thermal shock resistance also associated with the ceramic material and make it difficult to manufacture large size and the complex shape parts also difficult associated using the ceramic uh, component so therefore ceramic are usually use the composite structure with the metallic material so along with the ceramics mostly used in the to make the composite structure uh, where the basic component base component is the metallic material now joining of the ceramics material can several different way for example joining of the ceramic to metal is sometimes practically requirement is there joining the ceramic to non metallic material for example glass graphite etc is also required in certain application the joining of ceramics to the semiconductors also semiconductor material is also there is a requirement in a practical application so ceramics can be join ceramics to ceramics or ceramics to other metallic ceramics to non metallic or ceramics to semiconductor these are the typical application of the welding of the ceramic components but there is a huge challenges for the joining of the ceramic components or ceramic to other metallic and non metallic components for example that interface material have a similar coefficient of the linear expansion to the material being welded so that is the one point so the similar kind of the expression coefficient uh, is their requirement for the joining of the two components uh, if there is a difference in the the lean expansion coefficient so it might reduce some kind of the distortion and stress also generated at the interface now a large amount of the residuals exist at the interface between the ceramics and metal because ceramic and the linear expansion thermal expansion coefficients are different between the ceramics and between the metal there might be considerable differences are also there so that's why this will produce some kind of the residual stress at the interface when you're joining ceramic to the metallic component now this is another point important uh, issues associated with the ceramic various complex brittle compound are usually formed because ceramics are usually brittle so therefore when you are handling or welding or ceramic components it it is associated with the various complex brittle component compounds is easily formed at the interface between the ceramics and metal at this particular high temperature so that is another problem associated with the welding of the ceramics other things are also there weighting ceramics and the metals at the same time is sometimes difficult so we bring to we try to melt it when melt is so some weightability uh, between the ceramics and uh, metal are at, at the same time at, at there is a uh, may not reach at the same time so that's so that is a problem for joining the successful joining of the fusion uh, welding process between the ceramics and the, uh, and the metals now ceramic welding now in general what are the different heat sources are because we understand the ceramic the temperature high uh, is the melting temperature relatively high it is also very brittle so basically it can uh, the it is basically i can say that it's a kind of crack sensitive material so uh, so that's why handling of the ceramic components is the can be done or welding can be done using the conventional processes but the different way or this parameter range are easily actually very narrow when you try to select the optimum process parameter associated with any kind of the ceramic welding processes so usually electron beam welding laser beam welding which can produce very high amount of the the heat also then friction welding diffusion welding easily can be joined the are uh, these are the four basic types of the welding process can be followed for the joining of the ceramic components but high energy beam is restricted so high energy like laser or electron beam is very really restricted to the small ceramic parts and can be used only for the ceramics with the defined melting points for example aluminum and not for a silicon carbide and a silicon nitride so because it is not having well defined uh, melting temperature so that's why aluminum oxide can be joined using the high energy uh, electron beam or laser beam welding process but that same same processes are not applicable for the welding or joining of the silicon carbide or silicon nitride because sometimes 
high stresses cause the severe temperature gradient also if there is a high stress generator caused by the severe temperature gradient uh, that actually creates the easily damage of the ceramic joints. So, you have to be careful that should not have temperature difference should be uh, should not have very high. Then ceramics can be joined themselves to ceramic to ceramic or ceramic to metal even for following the deposition welding process. So, this is one of the most convenient or complicated uh, process the diffusion welding process between the uh, ceramic to ceramic or ceramic to uh, metal also but it is complicated to apply necessary pressure for the large component so we know that uh, diffusion welding process uh, we apply the joint the two component two seats to two components with the well defined after surface preparation we join component with the application of the heat and application of the pressure but in this case the if it is a complex complicated shape and it is very deep for a large component it is very difficult to apply the sufficient pressure to join between the the ceramic to metal at the same time the high equipment costs and the very large joining time also involve production cost also very high for the welding or joining of the ceramic components so but with respect to all this process verging is the most economical uh, welding process joining process for the ceramics but in this cases both metallic and ceramic bridge can be used to join between ceramic to ceramic or ceramic to uh, metallic component. But we know the brazing joint is strength of the base joint is usually lower as compared to the completely fusion uh, welding uh, uh, joint produced by the fusion welding process. So, here is the the this although it is economical, but joint strength is usually weak as compared to the other high energy laser beam uh, that means high energy beam welding process or deep friction welding process. Now, based on this thing, uh, there is a one welding process, the ceramic uh, back welding process. So, we know that applied the ceramic back welding is the not direct welding process, but rather is the supported process and uh, for the arc welding process. For example, we want to want to do perform the submerged arc welding process. So, it needs to place the submerged arc welding process in the, in the root can be uh, the molten metal is, might be there and solidification associated root also. So, in this cases the back uh, ceramic back welding process we use the uh, the at the back where the we put the ceramic materials at the at the back back of the oil component. So, here this is the oil to be joined together, but we put the ceramic at the back. So, here this process is the completely diffusion occurs and support the metal of the welding. So, when the metal of the welding it is filled here the molten metal is supported by this ceramic back. So, therefore, Ceramic back actually contains different materials, for example, aluminum Al203, SiO2, Fe203, titanium oxide, all the ceramic components uh, can be there. And the backing, back side, we can put all these thin components. So, here in this case, is usually used, the ceramic backings are usually used in the industry segments, for example, shipbuilding industry, marine facilities, as well as the plant engineering and other steel structure. So, here the purpose of the ceramic back welding means along with the for example, we use the ship building industry. So, here in the actual welding process for example, two very high thickness sheet are used the submerged arc welding process, but just back we put in the, the different ceramic component uh, such that the ceramic lining can be done over the uh, this uh, over the welded component uh, for the submerged arc welding process. So, it will basically protect the welded part. Uh, following the ceramic back welding process. So, so that is why it helps in that way that just put the support to the uh, one arc welding processes. We just simply put the blanket of the ceramic uh, uh, below the joint and then it becomes part of the uh, welded components just to protect the, the already the arc welded component. So, ceramic back is also rich in the anti acid, anti corrosion and anti chemical properties has to be enrich of the ceramic back welding process. So, here this is one of the, the directly ceramic back welding which helps to the, the life in enhancement of the, the arc welding uh, component. So, we can application find out the application of the ceramic welding process, the aerospace technology this can be applied ceramic welding process and metals are unsuitable for the hot structure due to the poor temperature performance, their high density and the problems caused by the, the coefficient of the thermal expansion. So, in this case we use the aerospace technology which is basically not suitable for the hot structure. 
now inherent high temperature limits the of the metal so it is inherent high temperature limits the metals in that cases we can use the uh, the ceramic welding process because ceramic welding uh, ceramic uh, application in such way that it can resist the very high temperature even ceramic welding can apply during the furnace operation so most of the furnace operation the ceramic lining or ceramic components can be utilized or ceramic welding can be applied uh, when you operate the uh, hardening operation that means we get the very high temperature there also we can perform the uh, ceramic welding process. So, these are the typical applications of the uh, ceramic welding process. So, here I have tried to explain the, the, the different welding technology for the polymeric material and very basic uh, processes we have covered and of course, uh, some uh, processing techniques associated with the, the ceramic materials. So, I think that will uh, uh, help to understand the different uh, techniques, welding techniques for the polymeric material as well as the uh, ceramic components. So, that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.